A freshman season full of flashes put Jordan Hawkins at the top of the list of potential breakout candidates as a sophomore, and he lived up to and exceeded every one of those expectations, being arguably the best player in UConn's dominant national championship run. A 6'5 off guard who is an elite shooter both off the catch and off movement, Hawkins has clear upside as a floor spacer, shot maker, and high level complimentary player. While he is slider in build, he's tough and competes on both ends of the floor. And even with some of the questions around the other parts of his game, he has an obvious path to being a contributor in one of the more coveted roles in the league. Jordan Hawkins is pretty easily one of, if not the best shooting prospect in the class and for a number of reasons. That is his elite skill and where he'll be valued most heading to the next level. He has beautiful mechanics from the ground up, is consistent with great energy transfer and fluidity. He has tremendous footwork and balance using pretty much every type of footwork there is depending on what the situation calls for. And he just has an innate ability to get organized quickly and maintain balance. And what might be most important, he's confident with a short memory, never allowing the last shot to dictate whether or not he'll let the next one fly. He shot 41% on 222 catch and shoot three point attempts and did it in a variety of ways, some on regular spot ups. He's great at relocation and should quickly acclimate to the drift and lifts or shake ups in the pick and roll heavy NBA. And he's a big time threat in transition, loves running the floor, and he's someone that teams have to pick up and account for at all times. We'll talk about what he can do on the move as well, which is my favorite and most intriguing part of his game. But in terms of simply spacing the floor, knocking down spot ups, and your every NBA possession type of looks he's already proven he can do that at a very high level and then that was wide open Hawkins will try from out there about and stay noisy Hawkins gave him early thrills and maybe Hawkins slashing to the corner and both ends of the floor can't make mistakes, Steve has an accurate bottom 50 in the entire country as far as the most fouls per game. And he's got 10. One shot. Outstanding defense. Hawkins on the find from D. Oh, right back to Jackson. He'll push it up to Hawkins. Open three. The Huskies running in Jackson the other way. Lauren quickly on the side with a three-point shot here, Lauren. Already the fifth three of the half for UConn. The thing that really separates Hawkins from everyone else is that ability to shoot it off of movement, and he's for sure the best at this that I've scouted over the last few years. His skill set and stamina match with the way that this UConn team executed sets from what's probably the deepest bag of plays I've seen in college recently was just a perfect match, and it turned Hawkins into a real weapon. He shot over 42% on 66 threes off screens, running a variety of actions and excelling at them all in every direction. They had about a million sets and entries, but at its core is a lot of wide pin downs, staggers, side to side looks. I think he's someone you can design things for and around and he fits very nicely into a lot of these modern offenses. Everything from his footwork and organization on the move to his ability to set up screens, control pace and read defenders off the ball and again having that great stamina. It's all excellent and can be used in several ways and create a ton of open looks for everyone. It's a free and he's got bigs back there. Up to 10 free throws now in the second. Up to zero in the first. Nice. With a second round date with St. Mary's on the line. Hawkins. And you're in such great shape. Hawkins, top of the arc. Yes. Very smart, but he is really picked up his scoring this season. Let's it fly again. And that's. Right away, ball screen. The Huskies who have been blowing out all their opponents to get here. And now the logo, number one scoring the Big East this year. Only six points. Didn't play a ton of minutes down the stretch as Klingon really played well. So Mitchell Saxon has checked back in. Sonogo on the floor for Danny Hurley. Hawkins step back three. It's as close as this game has been since it was 16 to 12. We got five minutes to go for the title. Here's Hawkins. That's, That's a good path towards victory. That beautiful ball movement.
So what's the answer? Shifting defense here for Villanova for Utah. Just shoot over it. Both of these teams retooling, and that's kind of the, the, the phrase that's used with college basketball these days. Everybody retooling. Hawkins, he's... Not only is Hawkins able to score from deep in this way, but depending on how he's being played or by design, he's very comfortable curling and operating a little more from two. He's a threat pulling up from the mid-range and can put it on the floor some to get to the basket when trailed or given an advantage off the handoff or screen. And I also think he'll be a good cutter just given his feel here. Now there are some concerns within the overall creation and two-point scoring, but I think he's got the tools and shown enough to keep from being completely one-dimensional and more easily chased off the line or funneled inside, which is an important aspect for the best shooters. On the turn, Hawkins. Early on in this game, their ninth and three-point shooting. It's Hawkins! Every second! It's a no-go. Get him here, get him three years, and send him on to the NBA. And this is his third junior season in the ball of the playmaker. Now, going back to Hawkins, for example, he's got it here. This time at a certain... Wow. Almost eight minutes. He's got to get busy a little bit. Nice pass. Now it's a chance to get all your defenders back set. Defensively, he was consistently a positive, showing good effort and a high motor the majority of the time. And off the ball, he had a very good feel for rotations and his positioning and duties on any given play or action. And while he wasn't super active in passing lanes, he was in the right spots and made a good number of help side blocks or contests that was just in the area. And his overall block rate was fairly high for a guard. And he competed at the point of attack as well. He's not the quickest lateral mover, but he contains pretty well and is someone who can keep up against many different guards and is a bit stronger than he looks or you might assume. Assume. He walled off drives pretty consistently and gave some players trouble and did a solid job of recovering back into plays when navigating screens. Now I'm not projecting him to be a huge difference maker defensively, but I think that he's shown enough to feel safe about him on this end. We'll get into where some of the issues could pop up, but as long as this consistent effort stays with him away from Coach Hurley, he should be in good shape and avoid being a negative or a liability. Sold out crowd as it always is here. The biggest questions with Hawkins come from his ability to impact the game beyond shooting the ball, and one of those areas is in his overall creation both for himself and others. It's important to note that UConn has some really defined roles. Most of the ball handling duties went to Andre Jackson and Tristan Newton and they ran you know, a crazy amount of sets, but of course it works and they won the championship, but he still hasn't shown a ton in being able to break you down off the dribble with regularity or take on significant ball handling responsibilities when we did see him handle it. And while this isn't something that he needs to be successful, it is important in determining his value in comparison to some others in the draft and how that fits with the rest of other rosters. Now with all that being said, he did have flashes and I think that there's some untapped potential here. I don't know how much or if it'll get to the level where he does a ton of it, but it is there. And at the very least, he'll get to that one to two dribble pull up with ease, the tack closeouts, and hopefully add that floater. That's an important shot for him. And that'll all be more than enough to complement his elite shooting or play finishing abilities. Because of how the game's changed, but clinging is a surefire NBA club. Hawkins, oh. outside, floating to the basket. He's got 15 points. Clinging did an excellent job. Hawkins, beautifully done. A lot of us can say that about all of our coaches. What a move and a finish. Hawkins, he's had the hot hand. Nine of the 17 early. 
He shot just about 53% at the rim this year, which was actually a big improvement from the year before, but still a clear area that he'll need to keep working on, of course, related to that creation. It's tougher for him to create the best angles as a driver. He often shot away from contact and had a tendency to get a bit out of control, trying tough clutches and reverses in traffic, and it all led to a lower number here, especially in the half court. Most of his drives will be predicated off the attention he gets as a shooter, which makes things a lot easier. It's just about converting from there. He's a better athlete than you might think when given a runway. He has some nice flashes. I don't think there's any reason to believe that he can't get better here but this is an important spot for him to improve when he gets run off the line and just overall as an offensive player some of the things that are staples to your program and the way you want to play like getting into the paint hawkins challenging goes reverse and scores with numbers hawkins oh boy look at that intensity has been pretty high so far oh, oh baby the, most caravan, the freshman gets up the ball penetrating again is hawkins I thought Hawkins did a solid job of making the basic reads off of those off ball actions and the attention that he got as a shooter. So that was good enough and at a level that you're not concerned with him being able to do that. But beyond that, he still got a lot of room to grow Going back to the creation as a whole, he's probably not going to be a guy who handles the ball a ton and puts consistent pressure on a defense in that way, and he had one of the lowest assist percentages by a likely first round guard that we've seen. But again, he's solid where it counts, and there really wasn't a big enough sample from him as a decision maker to have too many specific uh, takeaways, other than really this will only grow as his comfortability on the ball does. Holding on to and moving the ball around. Beautiful. And he and then while I like him defensively and I think his outlook is neutral at least, he is still slider in frame and had moments where that was apparent no matter how hard he battled or was able to show he's stronger than he looks. He struggled more against bigger NBA sized wings and in the times that he had to switch. And then he also had a tendency to get jumpy and fouled unnecessarily. But the big question here is can he guard threes or bigger wings enough to unlock more lineup versatility? That'll be one of the main things he'll need to answer over time. He's still a mostly positive or neutral defender, smart off the ball and has been impactful at the point of attack at times. These are just some of the things that show up on this end. That's the other thing, one of the best, not only rebounding, but shot blocking teams in the country. Need the Big East, averaging five blocks. See, Hawkins really did a nice job. Jones tees it up for B. Can't get it. Rebound Surya yeah. Long and, and where? Samuel. Oh. Jones again. Way down the cylinder. Jordan Hawkins will land anywhere from the late lottery to somewhere in the early to mid 20s for that elite shooting skill set that we talked about. And I think that he's got the potential to realistically be a long time above average starter for it with a lot of that contingent upon how well he holds up defensively and how much he can impact the game beyond shooting that three ball. And then in terms of fit, I think the Lakers make some immediate sense. Orlando was probably a bit high at 11, but having six also could make him an option or a trade bag candidate. And then Brooklyn having 21 and 22 and being able to go in any direction would be a nice long-term destination for him too. Comparison wise, I think KCP is a solid one in terms of role. Hawkins is a better and more versatile shooter and may easily exceed him offensively. KCP is bigger right now and able to guard up easier, but I think somewhere in that realm and importance is where I see Hawkins most easily fitting into, but he's also got some JJ Redick in there and his dynamic shooting ability, some late Celtics Ray Allen vibes, of course with that UConn connection there as well. He's carrying a heavy load for Minnesota. He's got 16. Simmons between the legs. It's a while there are some questions about the creation and what he does beyond the shooting, I know what I'm getting out of Jordan Hawkins as that elite shooter that can be weaponized on the move and has shown himself to be a solid defender. Getting bigger and stronger will help him out a lot, but that's already a combination that teams are desperate for and it'll make him a lock for the mid to late first round. 